This is a late 1970s General Electric GE performance television. And this is mint. This is about as close to new old stock as you can get without it being in the box. Almost no hours, not a scratch on it. Once super common, now super rare with the lovely simulated plastic wood grain cabinet. Even the antennas are shiny. This set is going to be used for live playback during the filming of motion pictures. So it has to perform right at uh, 24 frame per second or 48 hertz. The problem with the set right now is it has like filter hum running through the picture. But not when fed 29.97 frame per second. Only, it's only detectable when fed 48 hertz or 24 frame per second. And yes, these TVs will reproduce 24 frame or 48 hertz. See, in order for it, the, the picture on this to sync to the filming camera on set, it has to be the same frame rate. So, I'm filming this video at 24 frame per second right now. So you might notice it's a little slower and not as smooth. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by feeding it a 24 frame per second image and we're going to look at the problem. Okay, this rack mount thingy is a standards converter and we are feeding it 24 frame per second right now. And I could go 2397, but it doesn't matter. I'll show you the problem. By the way, just for the record, the gentleman that purchased this has over four digits into this TV, buying it, etc. So for those of you who think that vintage TVs are only worth $50 and uh, don't want to open up your wallet when something comes along that you really want, that train gonna pass you by. So I hope this is showing. There's a lot of noise in this picture, I know. But if you look right here, and the camera is largely correcting for it, but there's a very good twerk there. And it almost looks like the convergence is twacked out on this side. And it almost even more looks like the uh, shadow mask might be bent up here at the top. So what this shaking is, is it's the difference between 48 hertz and 60 hertz. We're assuming we have 60 hertz noise coming in due to bad filtering in the set. And so instead of having the difference of 2997 and 60, or just say 30 hertz and 60 hertz, which you could pretty much zero beat that. Here you have, what, a 12 hertz beat? The difference between 48 and 60? Yeah, 12 hertz. So this, this over here is shaking at 12 hertz. In fact, the whole thing is... And the camera might be correcting for it. Yeah, it's a little noisy, but that's because I got a bad cable. Anyway, so that's the problem. And what we're going to pretty much do is just go in there and start testing every electrolytic capacitor there is. Hey, look at this. 
there's quite a bit of a pin cushion issue here it's on both sides and the twerking is really bad I don't know if it's showing up but there's also convergence issues you can have a look at the inside of this beauty not many of these left around I don't think GE had a reputation for longevity. The flyback. So we have back here, we have one big filter. I don't know if you can see it back there. Um, I'm interested in checking these capacitors down here on this board. There's a bunch of them down here. I'm interested in checking those. Really, that's about it. Those on that power board. And I don't think that board would cause that problem. But yeah, we got the big one in there. And then we got some here. Beautiful little fuse block. Uh, let's see if I do that. Too much? Yeah. It's kind of interesting. I wonder why that's just flopping around there. So, anyway, with this capacitor back here, the big electrolytic. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some clip leads. It's been sitting overnight, but I want to short it and make sure that thing is uh, drained, drained out and doesn't have a charge in it because it'll ruin my tester. Okay, I've got the, every lead of the capacitor grounded. I'm just going to let it sit for a few minutes. Aren't these those safety capacitors that are supposed to be changed? These white ones? I'm going to start by checking the main filter capacitor with all this background helicopter noise. There's got to be some kind of event. That one's good. Good. Ooh. I mean, that's not horrible, but it all depends on what the value of that one is. Well, wait. Yeah, that one's a little low. Again, it depends on what the value is. So the... I can't see. Boy, would that be a... It's the red wire. Oh, it looks like it's going to the audio output transformer. Okay. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I got this board pulled up here. I'm going to check these and I'm not going to video that. Okay, I finally figured out what SAMS it's in. That You have to go by the service number here. The 19YC9760. Um, the 10 microfarad capacitor there which brilliantly was next to they had that resistor pressed up against it that blue resistor that one is pretty baked out I don't know if it's baked out enough to cause what we're seeing but it's possible also I pulled this board off to check those two and they're good but this little gray one that old gray one right there is a 2.2 and it's pretty dead they're kinda of sporadically dead you know um, it could probably benefit from a total recap, but yeah, I'm not interested in doing a total recap on this, probably even inside the tuner there. So let me get the SAMs and we'll see what we're looking at schematic wise. So the TV is from 1979 
and you can see here C904 is the main filter and the little tin microfarad is the one that goes to the audio that's not reading very strong but these two right here are good now I'm kind of checking this down here which is the the voltages the DC voltages that come off the flyback and C922 is that tin microfarad that reads a little bit high ESR. We got a we got a 22. I need to check all of these. C916. I need to find these. It's a very complicated schematic. So I'm looking at the schematic here, and there's if you see this right here, this 220. Um, I think that's on the pin cushion transformer. That is not on this set. It should be right there next to that gray resistor. The SAM shows a picture of it. They didn't put it on this set. No need for that kind of thing. And I know GE was into cost cutting. I wonder if they just... I wonder if that has anything to do with it. You wouldn't notice it with a close frame rate, but you notice it with the... the 48 hertz that might be something I might replace this one because I'm not finding any bad capacitors I'm going over this thing I'm not finding anything open like really bad I changed the 170 volt boost filter or whatever that is for the screens and just because I had a bunch of them and I don't know if it's going to show up here but the one that was there was definitely looks like it was leaking around the positive leg. So looking at this again with the standards converter feeding at 24 frame per second. If I parallel in a big capacitor across the one that's in there, this is a 820 microfarad at 180 volt. And the one that's in the TV is a 400 and then there's a uh, a choke and then there's a 300 if I parallel this in there it seriously cuts down on the twerking so the ticket here might be to add uh, a bunch more filtering capacity because the set has a perfect picture at 30 frame per second so maybe it just wasn't designed for this. It just, we need to beef the power supply filtering up all around. I'm looking at this schematic and I'm thinking about this. And this set just uses a half wave rectifier. That's it, just a half wave. I don't think I've ever seen a well, I can't say that, but like a modern, more modern all solid state set that just uses a half wave rectifier anyway. Half wave rectifier and a choke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna greatly increase the value of these capacitors. That capacitor, this capacitor, and there's one down here. Uh, that one right there. What do they have that one at? 22? Yeah, they, they say that's a critical component. Well, let's go up to 100 on that one. But yeah, I, I don't... There's too much trash with just a halfway rectifier. And that, that diode there pointed up, that's either there or not. I don't think that's there, but yeah, we're going to increase these fuses, go with bigger capacitors. If I was to change to a bridge rectifier, it would increase my voltage too much, so I can't do that. All I can do is add to the capacitors. These are inrush current limiters, and a lot of people will be uh, familiar with the CL90. Well, I'm going through and I'm picking out a couple different uh, ones of this. And I'm going to up those filter capacitors way up and then put one of these. What these do 
is they're like thermistors. So, for instance, this one here will start off at 30 ohms cold, and then in a second or two after it gets hot, it'll um, drop down to 4.7 ohms. So I'm gonna find one that drops down to under a half an ohm. The parts are in for the GE. I got two 1000 microfarad at 200 volts. I have a package of 30 ohm cold CL210 1.5 amps and I got a 16 ohm 1.7 amps. So these capacitors are going to go in parallel with the existing capacitors. The CL210 is going to go in series with this resistor right here. And the purpose of that is to, because I'm upping the size of the capacitors so much, there's going to be so much more, more of an initial surge when you turn the set on. That's what the CL210 is going to do. It's going to take that up. Um, and then I'm going to change this 22. There's a 22 right there. I'm going to change that with a 47. So that, that got some 47s right here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this stuff. That resistor is right there. See that resistor right there? So I'm going to disconnect one side of it put one of these in there in series, one of these two tens, uh, and then I'm going to just try and parallel the capacitors up here at the top. I temporarily installed the uh, surge limiter right there next to the degaussing thermistor and cold with the original capacitors I had a maximum AC voltage drop across it of 34 volts and it went down to about 500 millivolts hot. Okay, the capacitors are installed, just paralleled in there on the original capacitor. So let's see what our hit is now. Okay, so we're gonna do min max and we're gonna kick our range up to 400 volts. Okay, here we go. Please don't die, TV. 48 volts or 40 volts with 2,000 additional microfarads now you'll watch you see the thing warming up here how the voltage is dropping as it warms up and it'll drop to almost nothing okay well the twerking is virtually non-existent now so that cleaned up 95% of it. Here's what we got. The GE TV. Then we have our rack mount standards converter which will convert basically anything into anything frame rate wise. Then we have our over the air digital TV converter box which picks up the digital signal converts it to analog. Then we have just a pair of rabbit ears here. I'm outputting composite video out of the digital TV converter box and inputting it into the frame rate converter. And then that will adjust it to 24 frame per second for the TV. All right, so as you can see here, there's really no more twerking um, to me because I'm outside. It's flickering the 24 frame per second is like annoyingly flickering So the capacitors did the job. Is that if you're not seeing the signs of aging in your neck and your decollete, you will. This is Ooh, my decollete. Treatment for dry, 
crepey, loose, saggy looking skin, skin that has uneven skin tone or texture, maybe it has some sun damage there. I love that we have it tonight for you with results into firm and to hydrate and to smooth up. Is this a crepe erase commercial at 24 frame per second? Ooh, crepe erase. It is to share such a coveted product, so, such a product that both mine and Tina's family members are literally like, are like, help me, hello. Um, and you've helped so many men and women, like Tina mentioned, with your neck bars. But tonight, Ooh, neck bars. customers, and we're so honored that you got the chance to spend some time with you. And I think we'll see you Wednesday night, if I'm not mistaken. You'll see me okay. Wednesday at midnight. And I have to say thank you, Valerie and Tina, for your great support. And to all our support. lovely customers out there, thank you. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. All right. We have to give away a box. You go first. Okay, so you guys got social with us. Um, the Discovery box, I think, is gone now. Um, okay, we have 100 left, $8.33. You're getting nearly $99 worth of product. We sold to over 2,400 of them. And right now, we are signing are we the ready? box to give it to. Our winner goes to... April G, who I actually saw until her birthday month. Oh my God! Oh, I saw her in the chat. Oh my God! You know, I don't see. I don't see the twerking, but I do right here where the E is and live. I don't know. Uh, there's still a little movement there. It's not a hundred percent stable. Electronics, anything, all free shipping and handling. So if you have stuff that's in your cart and you haven't checked out, do it today because it's all free shipping and handling. There's all the winners, and we haven't had it up. So finally, we have it up for everybody. In just spring yeah. green to it that once again, you know, kind of. Yeah, I need to get another modulator on this thing. It, it's almost the signal is so weak. That's stuff that normally bores people. And, uh. Every 10 weeks in search of the ultimate contender. In the live season finale, the two remaining. Everybody's here trying to win some cash. Somebody might have a shot of driving out of here in a brand new car. I mean, I still see, I still see neck decollete there. It's not perfect. On Easter Bunny, I don't care if it's, it's broken eggs or broken hearts. This is going to clean up everything. It's ninety percent, but it's just not a hundred. I think it's usable. Had to sneak it into the show. Only order of the year, just like. So I'm going to take it right here. We're going to add it right into my little foot. I'm going to take this. Yes, sir. I need to keep my mind in, in my obje objective. We, we've come off two losses, and it's time for us to, to claw back. And, um... and piping hot. That's Kentucky Fried to order. KMC, it's finger licking good. Whoever came up with 30 frames per second versus 24 or 25 was brilliant because to me, watching this is horrible. I mean, this is flashing to me. Especially if you move your head side to side, it's like looking at a strobe light. We get it. It's hard to tell with the noisy picture, but our fee is free. That means you don't pay anything unless we your I mean, right here to me is. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's about as good as I can do with it. I could. I mean, I've got 1,500 microfarads of capacity, 3,000 microfarads of capac filter capacitor there now, if you include the one that was originally there. So, I mean, if that's not going to filter it out, then I don't know. You could change it to a bridge rectifier, but then that would sure up the voltage. And I don't want to do that. Here's one other interesting 
function of having all those capacitors. Okay, I'm going to turn the power switch off. I'm going to push it in. Watch how long the set continues to run. I mean, it's, I don't know, a half a second, a quarter of a second. Okay, listen and watch. It's notably, it's a notably long continuation after you turn the power off. 